My name is Nilly, and and I've been working with CVCRM for quite a few years, and I really would like to give you a um, background on CVCRM, what it can do. I'll start with a, a, a little presentation, and then I will move on to the demo. And every now and then, I will look and see if you have any questions. Like now, I'm going to check to see that, because where are you guys? Here you are. Got my screen. All right, so maybe I should just put that one here so I can see your questions anytime. And that one here, which I would like to increase. What do I do? Slideshow. Okay. Oh, many text in task. Anyway, let's move on. Um, this is my plan for today. Um, the plan is first to give you an introduction of CVCRM and CRMs in general. And then what types of tasks CVCRM facilitates, what tools and building blocks it has in order to facilitate said tasks, um, the data types, because after all, it is a database system. I'm going to talk about profiles, because they're important. I'm then I'm going to give you a demo. And after that, I will just very shortly talk about the a project of implementing CV and the system life cycle. And again, no questions. Lovely. I'm going to come to this. Um, full screen again, please. OK. So a CRM, as you would all know, is a customer relationship management system. It records and tracks data. It stores it in a database. And then it basically data mines the information in a way that will increase your ability to um, communicate with your customer, to actually find out more about them, to have everything that you, um, every information that you have about them in a single place. So you have a single source of truth. Um, Joanna would know about this term because I've discussed it with you yesterday, that it's so important and it's so useful to have all the data in one place, um, unlike I recall a few years back, several years back, in a bank where you'd call to say you've moved, um, and then they'd keep sending you letters to the old address, and then you'd call again, and they'd say, oh, this was on this system, but now I have to change it on this system, and then we'll change it on that system, et cetera, et cetera. That single source of truth is by far um, the most um, important thing, in my opinion, for any database system. Um, now, the database is basically just a set of tables, of course, but then there's a program that basically gets the data in and out in a very useful way. So for example, if um, you have a list of um, fields or options of a field, the one um, a, basically, for example, 5,000 people, the, the country of birth, um, if you put the whole uh, a country's names, each and every time that you put a data in, then that's going to take a lot of um, data space. However, if you say USA is country one, Australia is country two, um, England is country three, then for every new record for the date of birth, you just basically put an extra one. They were born in country. So question one, answer one, and then the question is at the heading of the table, and the answer is a, ne next to the option um, of the number that you chose. And that makes it all, as well, very, very efficient in terms of storing the data. So the CRMs, which um, refer to the customers, really, um, implement a strategy for managing a company's interaction with clients and other stakeholders using the technology to data to automate process and to synchronize them um, in a way that we'll see later with CVCRM. For example, client does a, or performs action one, which is pay for the event. Client then, a system then basically registers the client as an attendee, a registered client, rather than having to actually say, OK, I got the money personally. I'm a human person. I got the money. Now I'm going to tick them on the list of people who are actually attending the event. Um, and so basically, uh, let's just see, any more questions? No. Don't forget to, oh, hi, Casey. Don't forget to 
write all your questions, please. Oh, it takes me back to the first one. CVCRM. So CVCRM, um, it, unlike most, CVC, most, most CRMs and like a few, is an open source system, which means you are free to go to the code anytime and make any changes that you want. It's not some sort of a proprietary, it's no one's possession um, as such that they don't allow you to go in and change. So if anyone wanted to take it and then change it into a completely different thing, they're welcome to do it. They can do that. Um, there's no secret code anywhere. Um, it's web-based, which means it's on the um, cloud. You can access it from absolutely everywhere. Um, you just need to log in and your password. Um, and it is designed specifically for not-for-profits which means there's no leads and sales and all sorts of other stuff. It's just basically um, it, it revolving around the activities that most not-for-profit actually performs, like memberships, um, fundraising, of course, um, and event management, case management, and volunteers manage management. Um, there's, there's a little thing about grant management, um, but it sort of never took off really well, I don't think. Anyway, I've never used it. So, so what um, CVCRM? First of all, it stores the data about your contacts. Um, it will manage payments. So if we put online forms, or even if we don't and we just uh, use them in the back end, then it will say, OK, well, this person uh, uh, committed to paying $100 in donation, and then um, they made the donation via an online processor. Therefore, I'll just send it an, uh, a receipt for the payment. Um, thank you very much. This is for tax purposes, etc. This is the amount, and that's it. And all you need to do in that scenario is just um, run your reports and see how much money you, you got, how much money was promised but you still haven't got, how much money um, you're anticipating to get in the future, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so it does that. It's a great feature. Another great feature, the mail management. Um, you can send a, an email to an individual or a bunch of individuals, or you can send bulk email to a group of people that answer a certain criteria, um, e.g. those who committed to donate but still haven't donated. You can say, show me all the people who are owing me money. Please, let's send them this message. Or show me all the people who donated to this campaign. Let's do a Red cross -y type thing and tell them what good work we've done with their um, money. Um, it enables fundraising because you can, um, A, put um, online uh, forms on your website to um, ask for donations. It also has a really nice feature of peer-to-peer um, -peer fundraising where someone can say, um, I am collecting money for this organization. They get their own little web page and they explain to their people why they're collecting money for your organization. Um, they then send their links and email, and any donation that is received from that is uh, basically recorded against that individual as well as against the um, a, okay the person who paid and the person who actually raised the money. I've seen it used in um, in several different scenarios, which I loved. One was um, for an organization that actually enabled their people to collect money for to sponsor them to do something. So this was a, a, a kite, a flying, flying kite, something, um, that wanted to go on international tournaments. So they said, well, I want to go to tournament A. I need so much money. Please donate. And they, basically, the hosting organization was just facilitating that process for the person who wanted to be sponsored. And in another um, very common scenario, um, you basically say it's someone's birthday, and they say, do not give me a birthday gift. Please donate to that organization. So they can do that. And then at the end, you can say, well, for your birthday, so much money has been donated, et cetera, et cetera. Um, CVCRM facilitates events registration. It, um, I'm actually now noticing that I don't have memberships there, but I will talk about memberships anyway. Event registration, you can put a, define your event, um, and then people basically register. They pay online. Um, if you allow them, they can also say, I'll pay offline and send you money. The moment they pay, the registration is counted, and, um, and you know how many people 
are going to attend. And then once they have actually attended, you can tick off if, if you care to know how many of those who were intending to attend actually did attend. Um, the system, again, can be set to send them online um, invoices, registrations. You can schedule reminders for them to um, basically that the event is coming up and uh, don't forget to arrive. Or you can send them uh, the event is coming up and you haven't paid, are you coming or not? Please click on this link to make a payment if you are, etc. Um, CV member, which is one of the most important things but is missing from this list, um, basically enables the membership in that. I'm not referring to membership as I support this cause and therefore I'm a member of this organization. A membership here that I would refer to is a cyclical type event. It's something that is usually annual. It starts on either a certain date for everyone, like the 1st of July or the 1st of January, or it basically goes on for 12 months from the day you signed up. Um, it can be something that people actually need to be um, first accepted and only then they can become members, or something that uh, some organizations say, well, if you want to be a member, you're welcome. Just pay the fees, or it could be even free, really. Um, and so CVCRM facilitates that entire cycle whereby people can um, get a, an email or an SMS reminder that the membership is about to expire, and then they um, pay for the membership, they get the extra 12 months. You can set things against the good standing of the membership in terms of privileges for certain web pages. You can say only members in good standing can see these pages or etc etc and it's all this is the synchronization I was discussing before it's all part of um, it's all automated so you can, whatever it is that you want to automate against the membership status you can and that's a great feature for membership organizations because instead of actually chasing the people the people can say sometimes say you advertised in the directory that if you haven't paid your membership fees, you're no longer an advertiser, and that would definitely prompt you to pay your membership fees. Um, or if you had the uh, access to certain uh, contacts, I had once a group um, who used to expose members, members um, details to other members. So if that other member uh, arrives at a city, they don't know anyone, then they can look and contact the members in that area. If you don't, don't have access to that and you cannot contact the members, then that's an issue for you because this is a membership benefit. So there's a lot of stuff around membership that can uh, be organized. Um, and also, obviously, CV has reports. I, there's some standard reports. I can't say that it's a, a magnificent data mining tool yet. Um, if there's some standard reports, and if you want a specific one for your needs, then you may need to investigate in some development to, to get it just so. But you usually can get the data out um, for your report with some uh, finger work without said report. Just depends on the complexity of the report. It definitely has a set of standard reports. Um, and of course, any data you put in, you can get out. A report by reports, I mean manipulating the data and actually presenting something to you that you can manipulate. CV has um, a feature for case management, being a um, similar to a filing. So basically, if you deal with a client or um, anyone else, or you're campaigning with someone, and there are stages to um, your treatment of them, then you can basically create a whole case management workflow um, and manage their cases through CVCRM. Um, now, it also has, these are the newer um, features, an HR management and a volunteers management area. Now I'm going to check again to see if I have any questions. All right, I have a question. Two questions. Excellent. Will recording of this uh, yes, the recording is will be available, so I am recording this. Um, and I'm also be happy to email the slides. Okay, any other questions when I'm looking? All right, I'm just going to go down 
like that where I can see it. So I'm moving on to what CV CRM actually can facilitate for you. Really, it's in addition to what I said before. It can facilitate a communication between your constituents and yourself, this process automation, um, whereby what when something else happens, and then that something else would happen. Um, basically, you can personalize and record your interactions. So in addition to collecting data about people, which is always true, um, say their age, their education, depending of course on your needs, um, their place of work, if, um, well the age never changes, does it, but well, never changes, yes, I will stick with that. And um, the address, for example, can change. If you override the address, then the old address is out and the new address is in, and you don't need to keep the old address at all, usually. Um, but the interactions is a different thing. It's a thing where that can happen again and again and again. It's like instances of service, um, the whatever emails were sent or weren't sent, um, whatever um, <clears throat> phone calls were made, payments, event registrations. See if you will record it all against that contact record. I'll show you later how and where. And then basically that's your information that remains that you can mine afterwards, you can always know what's right. Um, next. Oh, of course, now there's a bit of description. Okay, CV Mail. CV Mail handles, it handles mass email campaigns. So if you want to send a, 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 a an email newsletter or um, something else that should reach a high volume of people, then you would use that um, both for a ease of use and for um, the ability to get reports on your email. Sort of face on your server because if you send the same email to a hundred people. It's much better that you said email number one sent to these hundred people rather than have the email against a hundred people's um, contact records. So there's quite a few good reasons to use CV mail. Um, it, it's, it's a great, uh, I'll, again I'll show you later, it's a great um, basically workflow that it presents to you very easy to follow and, and complete your emailing. But CV also facilitates emails to specific people and will re re maintain people who emailed you guys this afternoon. I thought now CV mail is a bit of an overkill to email seven people, one, two, three, four, five, six people, but I should, I should just use the normal CV email. So I just chose all the people who registered to this event and I clicked email them and I sent you guys an email. Um, so that's always an option. And had you answered the email, that would also be registered on CV that you have replied to this email. CV mail as well, uh, being a bulk uh, mass email um, type tool, requires that uh, we put an opt out um, and or uh, unsubscribe and options details, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, all for good practices. When you just send a normal email, you can just send it as you wish. Um, the reports for the CV mail are actually rather good. So the automation that we discussed in uh, user self-service, you can automate your invoicing and receipting. You can implement differential pricing. So when you put an event online, for example, you can say, well, um, this is the price that I want to um, show non-members, and this is the price that I want to show members. So then instead of actually having to ask them, are you a member, and some will say yes, and some will say no, and they will not, CV will decide in advance if that person coming to login is a member or not, and present the set of um, pricing that this person should be getting. Um, there's reminders, um, many scheduled reminders that you can do for many membership renewals, upcoming events, um, anything. Um, Usual reminders are email reminders, but you can add an SMS tool 
I mean, the SMS tool is within CV, but you can also add, uh, you need to add a provider of SMS. Um, and then messages can also be text to people um, when you want. So you define when and where. Um, it, it also automates event, event registrations and registrations to anything else. Now the self-service is basically are referring that to what your constituents can do um, rather than call you or write to you or any other thing. Um, they can see it on their dashboard um, the data that they've had. They can see that, um, I've put in just for an example because I've had clients who were running accreditation programs with a continual professional development points and so on and so forth. So instead of actually having to phone in, that all was a displayed on their dashboard. So they could see all the relevant bits and pieces. Um, they could see what events they went to. Anyone can see that using CV's dashboard, dashboard they, when their membership expires, et cetera, et cetera. So first of all, they can answer their own questions without actually contacting you. And the, thing, the second thing is that they can actually change the contact details if you allow them. Um, they can upload data as needed. So volunteers can upload their timesheets or scan and, and put in their um, um, receipts for petrol if, or whatever. And, um, through that user, user self-service. So that's another thing that makes it much easier both for the, your constituents and for yourselves. Um, next is a personal, personalized and targeted interactions. You will have noticed that each one of you got an email saying dear and then your first name. Um, I didn't actually write six different emails. I just put a what we call a token with the first name. Um, I just said anyone, use anyone's first name. So I could use something that says dear, first name, your membership of type, membership type, and then one is a student and one is a, a, a retired or whatever, um, is about to expire on, and then it will have these people's um, expiry date. Please renew it at your earliest convenience, blah, blah, blah. Click on this link to um, renew, and that would link would take them directly to a page that already has all the details, so they don't need to log in, and they don't need to do anything, just click, and um, and renew or donate or register, whatever the reminder was. Um, and also, when you want to send a, a message to someone, you can basically choose by whatever criteria that you wish to send them that message. So you can say, I would like to send a message to all the people who donated to me last year but didn't, who are the users, is it everyone? whose data is recorded. Um, yes, I will get to that in a second. Um, you can um, say, I want to send an email to everyone who donated to me last year for, say, campaign X, but ha I haven't heard from this year. And I want to say, you've been a great uh, donor in the past. Please come back. I mean, us, basically, members of the community, we have had this type of communication before. Um, CV just makes it very easy. You can just say, this is it. Or people who, if you put areas of interest and um, <clears throat> and someone says, well, my interest is in preserving, um, what do you preserve, Larry? Oh, no. I'm running blank. Okay. Um, preserving something. And you're on an event yeah. about that something. Then you could basically just say, show me all the people who are interested in preserving that something, and I will invite them all. So I mean, all the people who live in this area of the city, and I will invite them to that event, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, now, Larry is asking, who are the users? Is it everyone whose data is... In CV, we actually refer to everyone whose data is recorded as contacts. Um, right. Anyone as... Yes, thank you. <laughs> That's good. Um, <laughs> But anyone in your organization wants to is interested in uh, saving the environment. Yeah. So I was looking for something a bit more out there. So okay. anyone um, who is who is listed in CV is a contact rather than a user, 
anyone who has an account on the CMS, so on Drupal, Joomla, WordPress, whatever um, CMS contact, content management system you use, is a user. So as an administrator of a system, you would be a user of the CMS, Larry, and any one of you here. But as the member of the public or one of your constituents, you will definitely be a contact. Now, if you um, would like people to actually be able to interact with you, those contacts need to also become users of the CMS so that the CMS can move their details and into CV and CV knows who they are. Does this answer your question? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Thanks. Oh, I can actually hear you. That's exciting. <laughs> All right. Um, Okay, the synchronization is there, basically coordination of events to operate a system in unison. I'm sure I got it from some dictionary. Um, for example, when a member pays their dues and the payment and the membership status update accordingly. So you don't have to update in two places. Um, the system mirrors and supports your business processes and work. This is how um, the integration between business and um, the computer works, and the database maintains a single source of truth. The interactions recorded note in real time and provide required level of details. So when you send someone a, a message, it will basically list any bit of de detail you need about that someone in that message. Right, moving on, so the tools, CVCRM's tools. Um, the customized data collection. Let's just see if I put. Hold on, it's going to go building blocks. All right, so I'm just going to take talk about them. The customized data collection means that, in addition to the general data that nearly everyone collects, uh, details about people and their uh, uh, some personal details, some uh, contact details, some communication preferences, etc. You can basically define and collect data of absolutely any sort. And that is exceptionally uh, helpful for organizations that are too small to have a system that basically does what they needed to do exactly, um, a, because there are not too many of them, but they have some specific, um, basically, needs of data to collect. And that, it's pretty much all of us. But say, a big health organization, there's so many programs that know um, how to relate to people who have health issues. So they know there's patients and there's, uh, there's um, practitioners and basically it's all set up for them. And so it really perhaps, not that I know, I'm just assuming, makes little difference whether uh, you're in this type of medical practice or another. But in our area, there are all these organizations that are so out there that there are no systems that actually collect the exact data that they need to collect. Um, and so CV is really great for these type of organizations because you can customize and collect absolutely everything. Um, you can uh, customize as well any interaction recording. So um, for example, I have had um, clients who run Meals on Wheels. So any type of uh, meal delivery or change in meals request or whatever they could they could um, record. Um, others who have had um, let me think uh, other services they offered like peer support to one another could inter basically record the interactions between the volunteer who supported and the actual person who needed the support any interaction. So CV comes built in with the phone and email and text. Um, but you can basically call any out of their interaction that you do. You can basically define it and use it and fill the data on it. You can search on everything. It integrates beautifully with um, the CMSs I've mentioned before. So Drupal in the first and foremost WordPress as well and Joomla of course. Uh, whereby you can actually um, use data from CV to enable people to see certain things on, 
on the website and I think I've actually discussed it before so I'm just going to lose it for now but um, there's a great integration there. The data and import and export you basically, if you import often similar types of data, you save your import mapping and you just basically keep using it again and again. So any data that's outside of CV can be meshed to be CV, CVized and um, uploaded into CV. And any data that's on CV can be exported to Excel with ease. Um, the import uh, facility can sometimes be a bit temperamental. The export facility is just fantastic. Uh, message templates, automated or user driven. So there could be messages such as if I uh, want to remind uh, people of events, I would probably write the message once and then I would just keep sending it, just changing uh, the name of the event. So I don't have to write the same message again and again. Or if someone, um, if, you have, if you do have users of the CMS and they forget their password, you want to write back to them when they write to you, uh, listen, may just click the button underneath this that says forgot your password. But you can write it once, save it as a template, and then any time you get one of these annoying emails, you just basically just send the same email again and again. Um, and uh, of course, there's some other, a million other examples for user-driven. So you send them at will, but the majority, if not all of the text, is already there for you. The automated ones are part of any one of these processes that we've discussed, such as um, membership renewal, your membership is about to expire in one month, blah, blah, blah. Second membership renewal message, your membership is about to expire in 10 days. Third one, your membership has just expired, make a payment today or else. Fourth one, you know, your membership has now been forfeited because we haven't heard back from you again. Um, you schedule, you basically put them out the templates once. You say, I want this one sent a month before, and then this one 10 days, this one on the day, this one 10 days later, and, um, and that's it. You don't need to do any more with that. Um, scheduled reminders is, um, is, is quite simple, is quite similar, sorry. Just, I just want to send this message to um, remind you of your event registration. Um, the other things we use to be able to differentiate people in the system and actually put them together is that you can have different contact types. So if you have rather different constituents, um, some are volunteers and some are patients, uh, for example, you don't want to collect the same type of data on all of them. So you collect, um, you collect Basically, you call, you give this contact type a subtype and the other one a subtype, and you just collect the relevant information on each. I was discussing with myself before. Groups and tags are a means, obviously, to segment your, um, your uh, constituents. Profiles are actually, let me just see if I didn't actually write it all down in detail. Yes, I did, of course. Okay, forget what I just said. I'm going to run through this then. Contact data fields, you can collect these uh, basically generic ones that everyone collects or can collect, and then you can add however many that you want per your needs. Um, the activities record the interactions between either one staff and one contact or multiple contacts in the system. Uh, some you will assign manually, and others um, basically are automatically. Any time the system interacts as well with your um, people, it records this in uh, activities. Uh, generic activities include meeting emails and phone calls, and then you can actually choose any other one. Um, there are built-in data fields for any entity in CV. You can uh, basically collect data specific against the payment, the membership, the event, the group, anything, any entity. Right. Groups are used to segment the contacts, of course. Uh, there's two types of groups. One's when you say, this is my best friend's group, and you manually add or remove people. It doesn't have to be my best friend's, obviously, but you add and remove people. Um, manually. And the other one is what is called a smart group, 
where you define the criteria. So you say, show me all the members who live in this area. And then as soon as someone is no longer a member or move, moves out from that area, they're automatically excluded from this group. And then tags as well, you, you just basically can assign very high level, I mean, I would recommend only high level tags like board member or something, because these are things you will have to add and remove manually as well. Relationships, a great uh, feature of many CRMs and uh, definitely CV. Um, basically, you connect two or more contacts with each other. This person is an employee of that organization, or this person is a friend or a wife or whatever of that other person. Um, this person was an employee of that organization, but now they're no longer there, so you can put this is the date where this relationship ended, and this is the date where a new one started. And profiles. So the profiles basically let you collect all these uh, type of data that I've been discussing into one form. So when you see a form online that asks you both questions about yourself and uh, also um, what membership you want to, call to uh, um, what member, what type of member you want to become, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, it's basically someone had collected all these fields in a profile and put them together. Um, this is how it's done. Right. So I'm going to give you a little demo. Do you actually, do you have any questions before I give you a demo? Or are you going demo, demo? Nothing. Right. You're still there, yeah? Just give me a sign of life. Oh yeah, thanks, Casey. <laughs> yeah. yeah, still here. Sorry, on mute. Uh, sorry, I, have, I, have, I haven't heard that. Can you speak louder, please? I just said I'm here, but I was on mute. All right, excellent. So, so long as you're still here, that's all good. All right. <laughs> so, demo. I am going to go here. This is what I thought I would show you, the home page. Let's see what I can do in the time I have left. All right, so this is CV demo um, on Drupal. It's a bit uh, out of my control because this is the demo that everyone uses. And your home page, once you first uh, installed the CV, did not or will not look like that. This is the home page, but some people have decided that this is what they want to see on the home page. The event income summary, the top donors, the activities. Once you run CV, you click on configure dashboard and you decide what it is that you want to see. You say, I don't want to see this. I don't have any donors. I want to see my cases on the left-hand side, etc., etc. And you basically get to put what you care about on your home page. Okay. Um, on the left, you will see that's usually a bit longer. All the uh, all the either contacts or activities or whatever it is that you've been working on lately will list here. Um, the if you want to quickly enter a new individual, you'd enter it here. Not the most useful uh, screen in my opinion, because all you can put is the first name. Um, but it's here nonetheless. Um, you can create and you literally anything by clicking on this drop down, so that is a very useful um, feature. You can see here, because the individual has a, a little arrow next to it, it means that people, there are four different subtypes of individual contacts here. You can either be a student, a parent, staff, or volunteer. Each one of those will have different data collection um, against their, um, their fields, against their contacts. Even for organization, they actually put uh, two different types of organizations. Um, the three types of contacts in CV are individuals, households, not often used, but sometimes an organization. And then you can uh, basically start a new, any one of these by clicking here. 
the main navigation of CV Ever is this top bit. There's a quick search button here, which is actually quite quite nice. Actually, I won't be in the system, so I don't want to put in my name in it. Um, yes, yeah, so I just put system, and I got to this uh, clearly it's an organization. If I put Smith, that will probably get. So if you're quickly mm -hmm. looking for someone, um, you can put it here. And it doesn't just need to be a name. It could be their ID, their email, phone. You just need to specify which it is job it's going to be. No, nothing. No, no directors in the system. All right. Um, I should start by showing you a contact, okay? So I'll show you um, an individual new screen, a screen that we feel. So here you get all the fields that basically come built in in CV, um, the contact details. And then the address, communication, and notes, demographics, tags, and groups, they're all part of CV default. This one, constituent information, is not. So someone actually created some custom fields for this field. When you come to add the new contact and all these are closed, it's best to actually click here on expand all tabs. And then you can basically quickly see what's everywhere. So I'm not going to go too far, but I'm going to put Ms. Nearly testing. Um, but, uh, ah, see, it's giving me there's other similar contacts. And I'm not seeing the similarities, but you can actually decide on the similarities. that uh, you want to be notified about. Um, you like to this director, so I know, and don't have a nickname, and I am a staff. Maybe I'm also a parent. So I'm actually going to put two. I'm also a parent and a staff. So a, a contact can be no subtype, any subtype, all subtypes, some subtypes. Put email here, nearly at demo.com, and my phone. This is my main phone. Okay, this will be my safe Skype, or in America with all these other ones. Um, my website. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So these are all quite self-explanatory. Uh, the source would be where you heard, uh, where you got the data from, and that's really helpful. External ID. It will be a good idea when you bring information from an older system, and you want to be able to um, match it because maybe you're going to have to go back to it. Um, you can upload an image. You can enter one address. You can say this one is the billing or the home or domain. You can then enter another address. You can enter however many addresses that you want. It's the same with the phone and the emails, etc. Another, another phone, another website, another, another. Communication preference. I don't use that a lot. I don't use that a lot, and I'm just gonna go and I can completely say, don't even show it to me. Not interested. Notes, demographics and whether you actually belong in a group or many groups. I'm going to save that. If you enter in more, of course, you'll click Save and New. I'm just going to check about these questions. Why am I checking about the questions here? Just alive. I cannot see properly what you are presenting now. Oh, is it better now or? Is it no good or is it okay? Joanna. I'm waiting for answer. I'm just going to separate these two. Put my demonstration here. And your comment now is good. Okay. Well, that makes me happy. Okay. Fantastic. All right, so this is the contact 
uh, for contact that already exists. Um, the main communication uh, data here will be, or actually all the data will be here in one of these tabs. At the mock tab, which is the summary information for these people. Um, if I had made any payments or contributions, they will be listed here. Pledges, memberships, pretty vanilla here. Any event registration would be here. Any activities that have been done, the, um, if me an email, then and I'm not going to do that just yet. Then any activity, any interaction would be listed here. Case management relationship groups. I'm already in a group because I chose to be in a group, and I'm tagged as two specific people. But I was wrong. I can't be a company and a government entity, so I'm really just a company. So I removed one of these tags. And there's a change log to say that a change has been created on that date, and this is the person who made the change. Um, there could be better change log listings. It just needs to be integrated. Um, it just needs to be basically installed, and you need another little database to actually record more than just the who and the when. You can record the what and how I can reverse it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Any notes would be here. Um, and when you do add a note, you can say, anyone can see this note, or it's only for my eyes. Um, so that's the contact, basically, a database. A, a, sorry, the contact screen, um, which I wanted to show you. Uh, any questions again? Or you'll just write, won't you? I don't need to ask. I'll stop asking. OK. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you is the different searches. I've already shown you the quick one. Now I'm going to show you the second quick one, where you can either put a name or an email. But why would you? Because then if you knew who you were after, you would use this one. But you can say, I want all students who are in this group, very unlikely, um, newsletter subscribers, that are tagged government entity. Uh, in a normal world, I would get nothing. So I'm just going to see. I did get nothing. Thank goodness this world is still normal. OK, so I'm going, forget about this, forget about that. I just want all the students. Still nothing. Forget about that as well. All the individuals. Ah, 163 individuals. But I really wanted to know more about them, so I'm going to go, what am I going to go and do? We all live in the United States. There's nothing much I can do. If you see all these little red ones, they mean that in the communication preferences, the person was marked as a do not email. That is the search results, by the way, screen, the, just the generic one. Um, you guys can choose, you, you can say, I don't need the address, but I really need to know their date of birth. So you can chuck this and add something else, and whatever it is that you're going to see here is just going to be up to you. Um, you can search within these, but one of the main things that you would do with a, a group of search results would be, you say, I want all of them, and I want to perform an action on them. I want to add all of these people to the group, or not all of them, because I actually don't want all of them. I just want this one, this one, this one. These ones actually, they seem like they should go in that group, so I want to add them to the group. Um, you can attach them to a, an organization or household, any one of these. Batch update via profile, updated data, all of those together, delete them. Delete them just puts them in the bin, permanently deleting. That's, they're gone. Export the details, put, uh, create mailing labels for them, merge them because they're all called John Smith, but for some reason they were multiple data uh, contacts created. I want to start a new smart group um, for which you needed the criteria. So basically, if I click on that, all I chose was individuals. So it's not going to be much of a group. I want to print letters. You play with the demo and see all this stuff. 
you can do, basically. I want to say all these people, they're all gone on maternity leave, so I'm going to hold their emails. Now I'm going to unhold their e emails, or something like that, and tag them, tag them, everything. So this is the best, you know, running your search, you come to a group, organizations or anything, and then you basically um, can perform anything against these contacts. It's not always easy to get into that group. It's not always all the individuals. So we have the advanced search, which is way nicer. You can have any, basically, any criteria that you choose to have. All the generic data you can uh, you can search and limit here, and then your custom data you can decide field by field whether you will ever want to search on that, and then you, all the ones that you do you will have here as well. Um, this one is an unusual one. It is a sedate you would expect it to have a, um, a option to have from that date to that date. So someone didn't set this custom field ideally, but that doesn't matter. Um, so you can you want anyone who has been a member or is a member or said period anything you can narrow it down as much as you you want and you need to in that search but the thing with this search is that it's going to give you contacts interesting else just the contacts so you, even if you search by membership and you say I want all the general membership whose status is current it's not going to show you the membership as such it's not going to show you when oh, there's no one of course okay Bad search. Uh, I want to see all the people whose data has been in the previous two years. If I don't get anyone here, then something is really seriously wrong. Ah. ah, because I still have membership. Why is it wrong? So if something is wrong, I'm going. Modified date, blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. Oh, this is my... Can you see why I'm getting nothing wrong? Because it's to December 2014, and this, of course, is rather new. So I shouldn't have put previous two years. I should have put... I'll just choose my own date range. That's it. Till today. Okay, guys, it's 5 to 12. Do you want to stay longer or do you have to go? I'm just, I didn't realize the time was running. I was having fun. Um, sorry, I can't hear you. You're going to have to type. I can't hear you that well. I should, actually, I'll turn it up. Maybe it's going to work. Can you talk again? You sound crook. Right. Again, please. <laughs> now, do you need the projector for tonight? Yes, it's here. Um, uh, who, who's going to pick it up? Okay, you've got a key anyway. Um, there'll be probably somebody here most of the afternoon, but there might be a little bit of a gap or two if things go. Um, Oh, All right. I what shall I do? I need a show of hand if Blue I should book. continue or stop. You know the uh, booking book. It's already in there that you're borrowing. In a minute. It, so we know it's there. So that's good. Okay. All right. I'm just going to continue you. a little bit then. All right. See you. I just on your organising the projector for tonight. Uh, for me, I have to go to. Oh, sorry. Sorry to hear that, Mohammed. But um, I'll record it even if I talk to myself, and I shall have it online. Is that good? Yep. I think I've been a bit too ambitious. So, you know what, guys? I think we've talked about the others. I'm just going to maybe run my last couple of slides, and then I'm just going to stay here to take any questions from anyone who can actually stay, okay? So, stopping that... Uh, quite abruptly. 
I'm going to go back just to talk for a couple of minutes about the project process. So if you are new to implement, I know some of you already run CV, but if you are new to implementing um, CV, to actually run properly through a project, you want to first map your organizational processes before you even touch the system. Um, to me, that is crucial. Um, you want to then choose which components uh, are useful for you. Do you need a... Um, do you need a membership or you don't have membership, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. Uh, another meeting, perfect. So I'll sign off. Been jotting down questions for our meeting. Excellent. All right, Jonathan. I'll see you then next uh, next week in, in two weeks. Um, thanks for coming, everyone. Those who need to go and those who are free to continue, like Casey. Excellent. Um, okay, back. I'm going back here. So you want to map your organization's process because if it doesn't map, if it doesn't, if the system doesn't mirror your processes, then you're just gonna you're just gonna find that you're running again and again into issues, um, and it's just not doing the best that it can for you. Um, you want to choose the components. Not that difficult, you know. If you have members, you will use CV member. If you don't, you won't, etc. You want to plan the systems using all of the tools that it can give you. As I've discussed with you, Joanna, before, it, it's not crucial to do it all on the onset. You know, at the onset, you can actually do that um, incrementally or um, or never <laughs> or whatever. But you do have a system that has all this potential, and you would want to at least write down what it is you would want in the future, even if you can't do it now. So we don't go off at wrong direction and, and, and basically create a system that can then not accommodate the future work that you want it to. So I believe this is very important as well. Um, at the end of it, you get to this functional requirements document. You then agree on the plan. You install CV and configure it. You, um, if you need any custom development, um, for example, um, if you want to uh, your invoices to say specific things and your um, receipts to say specific things. Um, having a, a bit of a struggle with the e-way recurring contributions to make that work for CV. There's all sorts of things that one would need to develop um, or at least tweak. And sometimes there's none. Once this is all um, done, you want to test it. You want to have the uh, uh, users, system users, um, trained so they can actually test it properly. Yeah. Um, that again depends on the size of the organization sometimes. It's not. We might even get um, sort of, um, because know, there's not too many users. What I want to do. If there's change requests and there are always change requests, you implement them, you test again, you sign off yeah. and then in a case that you have a, more than a, a couple of users that have already been trained, then you go and you do your main user yeah. training. Um, yes. The next thing is that once the system is live, it's not the end of the day because this is not, it's not a, a picture, this is something that, um, I think right. oh, thank you so much, I'm not interested in merging, yes, I am, speak to you later, are you able to give an example oh, yes. of how yep. email, uh, yes, absolutely, are you still here, Joanna, I'll do that in a minute, good, thank um, you, you're not coming tomorrow, once you go live, you will again yes. find that you need yes. some yes. adjustments. After that, um, if you have an administrator to the system, then perhaps you want to give them further training. You may want to give them so much training that they know more than the trainer because they're going to be the ones holding your system. If you don't have that person to actually be the administrator, um, then I suggest you just nominate someone. Otherwise, your CV developer, your CV person, can be your administrator, but ideally you will have someone on the inside who can actually do lots of stuff, knows lots of stuff, and only when they don't know it, then they contact the CV person. It's just a matter of money, really. Um, support, so you'll need support, whether it's a, a lot or a little. There's some people I never hear back from until something terrible happens, and some people that I speak to on a weekly basis. So it can be any or 
And once you find that maybe there's a new feature you want to put in or well, you found that there's another need that we fail to refer to, then um, you add those and upgrades. So there's two types of upgrades. Um, one is uh, the, oh, excellent, Joanna. So one more minute and I'll, I'll give you another demo. Um, one is a security upgrade, which you want to have uh, performed as soon as it is needed. And the other one are the bigger upgrades. For example, there's just a new version out now. It's 4.6 uh, uh, in uh, um, the version, and some people still run version 4.4, 4.3. If you're having issues, it could be that an upgrade is just going to resolve the whole thing, um, or at least make other things easier, et cetera, et cetera. So once every couple of years, I suggest you would, should be prepared for a larger upgrade. Um, to actually and tweak the facelift, I call it, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, um, to do that. Um, uh, other resources that you can use is the demo site, which is what I was using today. There's a chat room, which is more for the tech kids. There are books, one for administrator and one for developer. They're all online, and a wiki, which is also sort of a book. You can search on things there. And of course, I should just put my name here because I'm a resource, but I have it. So next time. Okay, um, Joanna, uh, speaker, are you able to give an example how to email to a number of people in CVCRM? All right, let's do that. Okay, so there could be that I would like to email five people. So I'm just going to say I want to email these five people. And from after I ran a search, this is my list. And I am going to say email, 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 send email to contact. Um, this is the from address. If you have several in your system, you can say, well, actually, it's not from this address. I should actually put it from info at example.com. Um, these are the people who will receive it. If you already have a template in your system, then you can use it. But in this case, say you don't. Or if you wanted to, you don't want to send a newsletter from here. So say you don't. You just say this is a example email. Um, here you put whatever it is. So you want to put dear. And then you want each and everyone's first name. So you just put contact first name. Dear contact first name. My name is Millie and I have so much to say. Etc. 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 You can put any one of these tokens um, that you want. This is a, I know you live in this state, or you can put there any anyone here. I know you're recently divorced and therefore you need support from us or whatever. Anyone from these things that will be specific to that person. And then when you finish your email, you just basically quickly click on send email. Or if you want to attach a file, you can attach a file. If you think you use it again, you can save it as a new template and give it a name. And then next time, it's going to be there forever for you. OK, so this is one option. Um, one really important bit that I didn't show you on the contact um, is the actions of actually performing on a single contact. So you look for that one person you want to email, and you click here on send an email, or any one of these other things. This is a very important thing. I don't know why I forgot to show it to you. But you can send an email to a single person. And that's the same process. Or if you want to send an email to a bunch of people, a bulk email, then you basically click above here on mailings, and you click on new mailing. And then there's a screen 
process that you go through. You have to give your mailing a name. We'll give it a name. If it's part of a campaign that you're running, you can actually associate it with a campaign, but you don't have to. If you do have a template, so we are going to go with the sample CV newsletter, because maybe it's a newsletter and you already have a template for that. Um, again, you have the from. For recipients, you have to have a group. So you have to have the, uh, all the people you want to get that bulk email in a group, which is easy. For example, the group called newsletter subscribers, so that you can basically. Hypothetically, if you already had a, some of the people in this group, newsletter subscribers, that received the preview newsletter in another book, in another group, sorry, then you can say, send it to all these people unless they're in this group. And then you just get a smaller group. Um, then this is your template already that you've already put in online. This is your newsletter, but you actually want to change a few of the words and there's an issue here of something not appearing. You fix it all up. You go to preview it. Hmm, I'm liking this, I'm not liking this, I'm going to change it, I'm not going to change it. Very, very important, you're going to send yourself a test so that you can see um, how it's looking before you send it to a lot of people. And then if you have a group that is uh, you can t t send tests to, is even better because the email, how it's going to look when someone opens it in Gmail, another person on Outlook, another person on whatever else, is not going to look the same. So you actually want to send it to yourself in three, four, five different email addresses and platforms so that you can see that it's looking all right in all of them. And then I guarantee you that once you actually receive the email, you're going to say, oh, actually, this doesn't look exactly as I was imagining, blah, blah, blah. And then you're going to make some more changes, send some more emails, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then once you're happy, you click on Save. You say, I want to send it. Um, why? Oh, because you're not having response, respondents. Um, and you just want to either send it now or you want to send it at a specific time, let's say on the 30th at 4 p.m. If I clicked on Submit, then all these bogus people would have received bogus weird emails but I'm not going to do that. There's other settings in CV that have to be enabled in order to send it, but when you receive your system, it's already, I mean, if uh, you or if uh, uh, one of us actually sets it up for you, it will already be enabled for CV. Um, you can see that there's a few examples here. The um, Template in CV already gives you some information about how to do it best. Does this help? Is this what you wanted to see? And if so, is there anything else I can show you guys? And again, looks like I'm talking to myself. I'm going to stop the recording and then, but I will stay here to see if anyone is asking another, any other questions, okay?